before we paint this cute little elephant behind, <laughs> we're going to do just a light sketch uh, for the ears and just for placement for everything. Just freehand sketching this on very carefully. And so what I like to do is kind of mark the outer edges of the widest area of the drawing and then decide how tall it's gonna be on the paper and where it's gonna be at the bottom as well. So I'm gonna start by making little tick marks for the outer edges of the ears. There. And over here, try to make them perfectly even. And then the center point of our elephant. Now his back isn't perfectly centered, but you can even it out a little bit if you want. So I think I'm gonna make the top ridge of the elephant's back right about here. And then I'm gonna kind of mark where the widest point of the belly is. Or if you wanna go ahead and straight draw a circle, you can. You may have to erase it or adjust as needed, but that's a great way to start just to get the bulk of the elephant's body on the paper. And it's really wide. Don't underestimate how wide that belly is, which I did at first. And then I'm just looking at the angle of the ear coming up from the belly. And I'm gonna make the ears kind of uneven. They're sort of wrinkled and tattered. And then as I get more confident with my initial little pencil marks, I can go darker with the sketch. And the ears are pretty even across the, this plane right here. The left and the right are fairly even with each other. And this one comes up and curves in a little bit. And there's this little flap overlapping a couple times there. And then this one is about the same height as the other. And I made this one a little wider than this, so I'm gonna just even it out slightly. Even if one ear is a little uneven, that's okay. In nature, things are rarely perfectly even, right? And that little flap. And then already we're seeing our little cute little baby elephant taking shape. In this area, I'm not gonna sketch because you'll see we're gonna need to kind of negative paint these plants around there. But you can start to indicate where these wrinkles are between the back legs. And then where the tail comes down, almost perfectly in the center, this adorable little elephant tail comes right about here. And then you can decide to make the little brushy part of the tail a little wider. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Anytime you freehand sketch something, it's not gonna be perfect unless you spend a lot of time at it. And the goal here is to just get a quick expression on the paper, just enough information so you can start painting. And I think we've achieved that. So I'm gonna start by painting the ears completely first. I'm just gonna wet my paints over here. On this palette, I have my indigo is right here this fourth blue over and I like to make black by mixing indigo with a dark reddish brown. And this indigo is different than the Daniel Smith indigo. It's quite a bit more cool blue and not quite as dark but we can still make this work with let's try this one here. So I'm kind of playing with my colors here getting a little bit different combination of black than I'm used to. 
but I love to experiment with these. Take some burnt umber, mix that in there, and that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to just wet it a little bit more, and I'm just gonna paint in the blackest part of the ear. I am gonna have some hard edges, and that's all right, because this is where the viewer's eye and the focus and attention is gonna be drawn. It's with these little ears, and it's also the darkest spot in the painting. It's gonna cause a stark contrast. There's gonna be a stark contrast between this black in the ear and the much lighter gray on the back of the elephant. So hard edges are good when that's where you want the focal point to be. Going a little bit lighter right here, just by adding some water, dabbing down my paper towel to remove a little bit of pigment, but making sure it's still wet enough for the paint to smoothly flow across my paper. I'm using my Arches Cold Press again one of my favorite papers. And then let's grab that same mixture for the other ear. Just painting around those flaps that'll be lighter in color. may have to mix up a little more black as needed. Obviously, feel free to use black straight out of your palette. Personally, I really like the look of the combination of two colors or three colors to make black because it's a little more complex than just straight up neutral black. Getting a little carried away with the details, so I'm just gonna wash this out real quick with a more watered down version of my black. And I will come back in and do some more dark details once this first layer is dry. Just wanna get my initial wash on really fast so that we maintain that spontaneous, fun, quickly painted look. Just being a little more careful around the edges. Okay. So with that in, this one is mostly dry already. So I'm gonna just dip my brush in the water and paint in the top of the ear and leaving a little highlight where that wrinkle folds over. Watering down again and painting with an even lighter value all the way up to the tip, the top of the ear. Taking that light gray on the other side. It's really rewarding and satisfying to work in sections like this because you really feel like you've accomplished something already within five minutes, you've finished the ears. And then it just frees you up to mentally move on from there to the next section without giving this really too much thought. Now I am actually gonna rinse my brush and lift a little bit of paint out of that ear, indicating some of those wrinkles. Yeah. All right, it doesn't look like much yet, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna add a ton of water to my gray mixture, which, well, it was black, but now it's gray. Ton of water. And we're gonna use that for an initial wash on the elephant. You know, I should go to a bigger brush for this. Switching to my size eight round brush. Now I'm gonna to need to slow down a little bit here. I'm gonna go really fast on the top portion so it looks quick and spontaneously painted. 
but where the grass is overlapping our little guy, I'm gonna slow down so that I can leave some white areas that are gonna look lighter in the finished result than the shadows on our elephant. All right, so I'm gonna leave one stem kind of coming up right here and another one right next to it. I'm not gonna paint all the details of that grass. It would be easy to kind of get caught up in that, but I'll just kind of indicate with a scumbling of my brush, a suggestion of that grass in front of our little guy. Get in these shadows underneath the tail. And again, over on this side, maybe painting a little more carefully around a couple blades of grass, but the rest of it, I'm just gonna kind of quickly brush the gray on, leaving a little bit of white where we can paint in the grass tones later. Okay, that's still damp, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of my raw sienna or yellow ochre if you have that. And I'm gonna add a little of that in where I see warmer hints in the gray. A little bit along the ridge of the little elephant. But again, remember not to press hard with your brush at all when, you've, when you're when you doing wet and wet like this. It's gonna form some blooms here, I can see, which is fine. Okay, so that's a good first layer on the elephant. And then while we're letting that gray dry, I'm gonna come into the grass now, switching back to my size four round brush. I'm gonna take my phthalo green light. This is my grass green beautiful, brilliant green. I'm gonna start painting in a couple little blades of grass. One intersecting another. And then taking a little bit of yellow Watering it down a little bit. A little more of my yellow ochre for more of a natural color in the grass and straw. Let's switch back to that spring green. And now I'm just gonna kind of wash it on with lots of water all around our little guy. I am gonna leave it just at the bottom instead of extending it all around his body. You can choose to add that spring green all around him if you want to. And I'm just gonna leave it at the bottom here. I'm gonna add in a darker green, just for some color variety within this grass. While it's wet, just dropping it in wet and wet. And so we're getting the effect of shadows within the grass. When we go back in and paint the shadows in our elephant's little bottom here, we, may, we will negative paint a little bit around this grass too. Okay, with the body mostly dry, it's time to add some wrinkles. Yeah, I think that's dry enough. Actually, before we add the wrinkles, we need to go a little darker in value 
on some of these shadow shapes. So where the belly is turning underneath into the shadow, you need to go a little darker there. Yes, I just used my finger. And I'm just taking my black and painting these little ridges on the leg. Notice it's definitely not a flat wash. I'm using the tip of my brush to catch on the surface and leaving some areas white, representing those divots and wrinkles in this little guy's skin. Watering down my brush a little bit and adding another shadow on this side of the belly. Notice I'm not worrying about the edge here being perfectly smooth because his skin is so wrinkled. It doesn't need to be smooth, which should feel kind of like a relief to you. I mean, you don't have to worry about softening the edge or anything like that. A little more black and going darker here. I want to get the values right before I go in with all those other wrinkles. And there's definitely more shadow down here. But while I'm painting that on, I can start to pull some of that dark, fresh paint up into the light area too, to begin to indicate the, the wrinkles in the light areas. Okay, so this area is dry. I am actually gonna scumble that out, go dark, go really dark right here. I started with the wrinkles, then I decided it, the whole area needed to be shaded in first. Notice I'm slowing down so that some of those blades of grass are avoided. You want to make sure the value on the other side of the blade of grass matches this one so that they're the same. Otherwise it'll look a little bit odd and unnatural. And I'm pulling that wet paint up and around the tail, getting those little wrinkles that wrap around it. And I'm going to start adding in a few little shadows kind of in between our little blades of grass here. And then going darker with this area, which is the front leg. Again, just using the tip of my brush to create that texture already. And now this shadow side is dry, so I can go in with my black and paint some wrinkles in there. Too dark, so I'm watering it down, getting dipping my brush in the water so that the paint can flow a little smoother and then scraping my brush across the surface for that dry brush technique. With the wrinkles you're almost cross hatching which is when you have lines that are going one way and intersecting with another set of lines. So 
So now we're just going in with those fine little details. This part is super fun. You can go as detailed as you want or as loose as you want. Totally up to you. I'm going really dark under the little nub tail here. And then just defining the shadow along the bottom. Adding a few dark wrinkles on the now dry ears. And then we're going to paint those dark wrinkle shapes in the bottom. Make sure you leave some highlights where the skin is catching the light a little more. Really emphasizing this tail and the wrinkles on there. It is the center of the painting. And you can see the wrinkles kind of encircle that tail as it's coming out, which is so cute. Again, all you have to do to really make it look like elephant skin is this cross hatching motion which I'll do right here in this leg again to just show you. These lines are going this direction and then I intersect them with some more lines going the opposite direction and that's really all you need to make it look like elephant skin. A little cross hatching. Yeah. All right, well, there's our finished little elephant. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's a fun, easy one, not too hard. You don't have to worry about eyes or faces or perfect proportions. Give it a try and I'd love to see it. Post it on Facebook or Instagram and just tag me at eolsonart and I'll see you guys in the next one.